from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Award for Best Educational Program. I'm the host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Animals. This is segment one of episode 53. In recent episodes, we've been doing a lot of work on animal habitats and biomes. This map from National Geographic shows areas of the United States that have been studied and analyzed for the frequency in which various habitats occur. Now you'll remember that habitats are where any given animal meets its needs for food, water, shelter, and space. The areas of red are habitats that only occur in that location. Habitats in orange areas occur more than once, but there are very few of them. These habitats are rare. At the other end of the spectrum, the dark green represents areas that occur frequently in the United States. In other words, they are common. So you can see from the map, infrequent and unique habitats are found along all three coasts, Atlantic and Pacific Oceans and the Gulf of Mexico. Several areas of the west and along the Appalachian Mountains also contain some unique or rare habitats. Without an animal's habitat, the animal cannot survive. The National Geographic collected and presented this information so that communities can make informed decisions about how they manage and protect these critical areas. Now, one area of critical concern in the Pacific Northwest is the exact location of this TV station, right here in Southern Oregon. Much of it is likely to be protected in the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument, set aside for careful study and management and recently expanded by President Obama. The area is in peril as the Trump administration reconsiders this protection. So as this program is being produced, the Secretary of Interior visited Southern Oregon as part of this reconsideration. Over 200,000 Oregonians gave comments of support for continuing the monument status, and local residents made sure the Secretary knows how much this community supports the monument as it was expanded by President Obama. Now, we're told to expect a recommendation to President Trump somewhere in mid-August of 2017. So habitat isn't just an academic matter. As National Geographic states on that map, the greatest threat to diversity of life on Earth is loss of habitat. I hope you've located information about the animal you've chosen to research and on which you're writing a report. Previous episodes demonstrate how to find and communicate facts about an animal's physical description, its distribution or range, and its habitat. Today we explore another research topic, your animal's classification. Now, part of the work is already done for you. All the living things are classified in a systematic way called a taxonomy by people. The living things belong to five kingdoms, animals, plants, monera, which are tiny things like bacteria needing a microscope, and protists, even smaller things needing a very strong microscope. And let's not forget the kingdom of the fungus, because the fungus is among us. Now, since you've chosen an animal to research, you already know that it's in the kingdom of animals. Now, at the next level, animals are grouped according to certain traits they have, and this determines the animal's class. The first grouping has to do with bones. 
Specifically, does the animal have a backbone? If it does, it's called a vertebrate. If there's no backbone, the animal is called an invertebrate. Now this is called a vertebrae, this here, okay? This is called a vertebrae, and um, let me tell you about it. Inside is a spinal column that carries the nerves to and from the brain and other parts of the body. Now you have one of these two, reach to your back or your spine and see how rough it is, all those bumps. Those are the bones like this one. The backbone forms part of the interior bones we call the skeleton. It gives form and shape to the body. Now let's look at the vertebrates. These include mammals, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and birds. So these animals are also grouped by having a list of traits. Now, let's go on to fish. With few exceptions, fish are cold-blooded. They are covered with scales, and they lay eggs to reproduce. However, fish don't have lungs. They get the oxygen they need from the water in which they live by using gills. Fish have backbones, by the way. Now let's look at reptiles. They also have backbones and they lay eggs to reproduce. Reptiles are cold-blooded and their bodies are covered with scales. In these ways, reptiles have a lot in common with fish. But here's how they differ. Reptiles must get their oxygen from the air, so they have lungs that help them do that. Now some reptiles spend much of their time in water, but they have to come up at times for a breath. Amphibians are so close to reptiles that they're often studied at the same time in school, but they're in a distinct class in the, that their life cycles are distinct and a uh, difference that they lack the scales that reptiles have. Now let's take a look at birds. Uh, birds have little in common with reptiles and amphibians. Birds produce heat in their bodies and self-regulate their body temperatures. The term for that is warm-blooded. They breathe with lungs and they have backbones. They're covered with feathers rather than scales, but they do lay eggs like reptiles do. Now mammals are warm-blooded just like birds, but they differ in very important ways. Mammals give milk to their young. No other classification of animal does both of those things. Mammals also have hair or fur. They breathe with lungs. They give live birth. And of course, they have backbones. Now, classification, that's those classifications of animals that have backbones. What about those that don't have backbones? Well, there are lots of those. This poster shows just a few. The one thing this diverse group has in common is the lack of a backbone. With bones giving animals their shape, how do these animals hold their shape? Well, most of them don't. Uh, some of them can change their shape. Some hold their shape by having a hard shell on the exterior of their body, what we call an exoskeleton. Now, familiar to many people, insects are invertebrates. They have that exoskeleton. Uh, insects have six legs and they lay eggs to reproduce. They go through life stages, some of them undergoing dramatic changes called metamorphosis. So with this information, you can tell which classification your animal fits in. If you're stumped, I'll show you at least one way to tell. But first, let's watch a video about mammals as we end segment one of episode 53.